I'm so glad you guys are clapping for me like that. <laughs> I, I have a hunch hammer's got something to do with it. <laughs> so, uh, when I uh, invited uh, Ron and Hammer to uh, come talk with us today, there were a couple of things that I had in mind. One of them, both of them are incredibly civically active. Uh, they also were uh, instrumental in helping Mayor Ed Lee get elected. Uh, so uh, I'd love to talk a little bit about the bridge that you guys made from being politically active to what Jen calls being bureaucratically active, you know, actually helping with the business of government. So let's start maybe a little bit with, with uh, you know, the election. Sure, sure. Um, so tech in San Francisco and... By the you way, know. I should say, sorry, let me interrupt. If, in case anybody doesn't know, Ron Conway is the legendary angel investor uh, here in San Francisco um, who's been basically funded many of the great companies here in the, in the Valley. And I think Hammer needs no introduction. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, so the tech community in San Francisco, uh, how many of you are from San Francisco? So, you know, only a smattering, but you can do this in your city. Uh, but the tech community in San Francisco has had a s hell of a civics lesson in the last year and a half. And it was a, a confluence of events that catalyzed the tech community. But, but I think it can happen in every city in America, and I hope it happens in every city in America. For sure it's happening in New York City because New York City has a receptive mayor, uh, Mayor Bloomberg, who's receptive to tech. In San Francisco, we have Ed Lee as our mayor, who spoke yesterday, who is also receptive to tech. But, you know, tech is not about talk, it's about action. And Ed Lee did two things for the tech community when he was appointed mayor, prior to being elected mayor. And that was, uh, he kept Twitter in San Francisco. Uh, San Francisco has an onerous payroll tax, and Twitter was going to leave the city. And I, I am an angel investor in Twitter. I know it's true. They were going to leave San Francisco over this, this onerous payroll tax. Ed Lee literally created a payroll tax-free zone for tech companies in a disadvantaged area of San Francisco on Market Street. So, you know, it was, it was a give and take, but it was a win-win for the city. Then Zanga and Yelp were about to go public, and San Francisco also has uh, a very onerous uh, tax on stock option exercise. Uh, they, if you, if you uh, fulfill your stock option, it's ordinary income. No other city in the country does that. So San Francisco, you, you could classify as a tech unfriendly city. But this new mayor was saying, hey, wait a minute. Jobs equals prosperity. Jobs equals better living conditions for the community. I'm going to do anything that helps create jobs. So it was those two actions that when Ed Lee decided to run for mayor, and we had to help convince him to run for mayor. Uh, this is a very humble guy who was appointed mayor out of the city bureaucracy. Um, so we convinced him to run, and once he ran, the tech community rallied around him, and we had two very unique things that we did. We did a viral video, which MC Hammer starred in, starred in with Brian Wilson, uh, and it was making fun of the fact that Brian Wilson has the beard, Ed Lee has, has this distinctive mustache. Uh, half a million views on that, on that video. Um, and we used social media to make that that video viral, and we're going to do it yeah. again with Prop E. Okay, uh, Hammer, maybe talk a little bit about your civic interests and involvement. Well, I, I think uh, fundamentally, um, two of the points that Ron just made was that by changing uh, San Francisco's approach to uh, these issues, it would keep companies like Twitter here and keep jobs here. And for me, you know, being obviously from the Bay Area, you know, all my life, uh, going back to Candlestick Park in 1971. So I've been here for a long time and I've watched uh, the development of the city. And obviously, I, you know, I've been hanging around tech for about 14 years. And so when I saw 
what Ron's ideas were, and he you know, articulated them clearly, uh, and that Ed Lee was very receptive, uh, I got excited about that. Because again, at the end of the day, uh, for all this creativity, for the, you know, the startups to happen, you need a base, and you need engineers, and you need these, these things to, to, to be here. And so by you know, embracing technology right. and embracing these business positions, it would help keep the companies here. And, and, and at the end of the day, out of that ecosystem would come more spinoffs, more jobs, more companies. But you, you're uh, actually, uh, you were telling me uh, backstage how you were actually doing some work with Mayor Nutter in Philadelphia. Uh, so it's, you're not just working here in the local uh, civic space. No, no. In uh, Oakland. And, and, you know, always Oakland, as Ron knows, Oakland is all, always first. So any ideas I get from Ron, <laughs> it's, all, it's automatically to take across the bridge. <laughs> uh, and, 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 and our friendship and relationship Very is legit. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but the uniqueness of my life is that I do have a global view. I just uh, came in right now from uh, South Africa, from Cape Town in Johannesburg. And I see the world as being very small. Um, you know, again, you can get on an airplane in 12 hours and be anywhere on the other side of the globe. And so anything that's best practices and best cases and technology that can be helpful. With Mayor Nutter, uh, it was about four years ago, uh, I literally saw that a number popped up on Google and it said that 356 murder had happened in Philadelphia. Well, I happen to be a, a guy who loves Philadelphia, and I have great friends from Philadelphia across the board. And so I called one of my friends and said, hey, I need to go to Philadelphia. And he said, what for? I said, I need to see the mayor. And he, he said, why? I said, well, there's only, you know, he had more murders now than days in a year. It's a murder every day. So somebody needs to bring some help. So what I, I have an idea. I want to take technology from Silicon Valley, bring it into Philadelphia, go and meet with the youth in the uh, you know, uh, juvenile system, introduce them to social media and things like this. If they buy into it, as anybody knows, and again, this is four years ago, once you're hooked, you won't have time to be in the streets as much. And so I wanted to introduce him to the technology. That was my, my strategy. And I wouldn't met, and he was receptive, by the way. And I ended up going to the juvenile system and started a program. So, so uh, any of the, the uh, students there are people we ought to be following <laughs> on Twitter? <laughs> well, I, I think anybody who is uh, still uh, actively trying to pursue their dreams, we should follow and support. That's great. So, um, Ron, you want to talk a little bit about uh, Prop E? Yeah, Prop uh, E. Obviously, this, this is a local proposition, so you got to. Most of the people here aren't from the Bay Area, right. but so, what, so what's the general? But principle? it's an example of a catalyst that brings the tech community together. So, after Ed Lee got elected, we did succeed. Um, two days after the election, he said, "Hey, you're not going to stop here, are you?" And he was basically talking to the tech community. And I said, "Yeah, we're a little exhausted." And he goes, "No, no, no, no." You've got the tech community rallied around. Let's start an organization. So we did. We started in uh, what we call the Tech Chamber of Commerce in San Francisco. And you should start one in your cities. We call ours SF City. We have 350 tech companies as members, representing 90% of the tech jobs in San Francisco. So we have gone into the city and said, hey, our transportation system is screwed up. There was a hackathon, which CFA is awesome at, and um, we've developed an app for Muni to make Muni more efficient. SF Police Department, they spend 40% of their time in the uh, police station writing reports. We have a tablet project sponsored by SF City where they write the reports at the scene and spend 40% more time um, on the streets of San Francisco. And then on this tax issue where Twitter was going to move out, we have a proposition on the ballot this November where all of tech will no longer be burdened by a payroll tax. We're going to switch it to gross receipts. We have no organized opposition to that. Uh, the reason for that is, is the tech community is united and, and we're doing things in, in you know, on the ballot, but we're also doing things to help the streets of San Francisco. And you have to be involved in both if you're going to be credible. Yeah. So SOPA helped catalyze all of us last January as well. So um, let me ask this question. Uh, you know, not every city has tech as an industry. 
uh, not every city um, you know, can say, oh yeah, we'll make a tech chamber of commerce. What are the general principles? And how do you, I guess, uh, I love advice from both of you on how people from cities around the country should think about understanding. And again, when I think about so social media, it's about understanding your community and figuring out how you can work with that community more productively. You know, again, I think about what an unlikely uh, group, you know, see, you know, Mayor Ed Lee with you two guys, uh, you know, and yet th there's a coalition there. Now, I imagine every city has unlikely leaders who can step forward. How, what advice would you give uh, to people from uh, other cities the, about how to find the equivalent to Ron Conway and MC Hammer in their city? Well, the number one issue that I think will draw your communities together is job creation. Form an initiative in your city that encourages job creation. Because the unemployment problem in this country is the biggest problem. It's all they're going to talk about in the debate, essentially. Um, so find ways in your community to create jobs, and that'll be the catalyst in, in your town. And on the other side, in social media, what we've all found out is that the capacity really is you know, within the community. So solving uh, the localization of problems can happen with the voice of the people, and we can use these platforms to you know, collaborate and uh, uh, extrapolate the best uh, ideas from that and present them to the city. So somebody in every city is you know, very much savvy uh, in social media and, and, and they can be that voice that connects on the other side with policy and government. All right, thank you very much for coming and sharing your time uh, with us. I really appreciate your support for Code for America. Thank you very much.